even though I'm not telling you about this, it's going to be on the video now. And now we're to this problem. Right, right here. Right? This is number two. Yes. What is you? No. Sine 4x plus 2. What is du? Is it 4 cosine 4x plus 2? Um, the 4 is going up a little bit. I think it's 4 again. Well, when I take the derivative, don't I do the derivative of sine and then the derivative of what's inside? Yes. Doesn't that give me a 4? Yes. You with me? Yes. And guys, we have done these, but it's been a while, so I'm trying to make it back fresh in your mind. So what do I have to have? 1 fourth, the integral of what? 1 over u du. Which is equal to what? The absolute value of what? Plus 2 plus c. Don't forget your plus c because I will take off for the plus c. My plus c would be like 4 points off or would be like 1 point I don't know. Just remember, and it's not a question. All right, read number three. <coughs> read number three. What kind of problem is this? Uh, it's kind of a first. first. A what? A first. Y equals y sub o. Y equals y sub o e to the... Right? All right, what do I know? Why is 800, okay? Isn't that y sub t is 800? y of t is 800. Do you agree? What is y of 0? <laughs> I was like, did I? Uh huh. Well, that's correct English. You never start a sentence with the word number written. You always start have to write it as a word. Don't you know that? No, I, I don't follow that rule ever. Well, the first word in a sentence should never be a number. It has to be a word. I did too, but I did remember that. Okay, what else do I know? No, I don't know K is 0.04. You know I know that it's increasing 4% a day, right? So could I find K? If it increases 4% a day, how many do I have at the end of one day? Which is, how many do I have at the end of the day? How many do I have at the end of the day? Two more. Two hundred eight. Huh? Two hundred eight. Thank you. So can two oh eight equal two hundred? E to the K. Is that right? What was T? One. One. Now I can find K, can't I? K equals LN of 1.04? Did you all get that? Yeah. Now what do I need to find? 
t when y is 200? 800, okay. So does 800 equals 200 e to the t times ln of 1.04? Right? So 4 equals e to the t ln of 1.04? So ln of 4 equals T ln of 1.04? I have the answer. I can. Amen. 35.346 days. Label your answer. Okay? I kind of tried to fit three of the ones that kind of covered a lot of things. Did all of these make sense to you? Yeah. Or how do we know, again, how, how to not use, or how do we know that we are not supposed to use 4% as K? Well, because it doesn't say K is 4%. It is said it increased in one day 4%. We don't know so how many days. So you have to find K. Yeah, we don't know how many days. And it really, if you thought about it, you see it increased to 4%. So LN was, or the K was LN of 1.04. So the 4 came in there, but you have to find what that K is. Because the more time, like, it would be like much more percent per yes. K. Yes, yes. Because it's later. Yes. <laughs> because then it's an exponential. It doesn't increase 4% every day. The first day, that's what it did. All right. So... On the test, differential equations. Do you remember differential equations? That's a yes. So do we don't need to work one? Okay. It's when it looks like this. Oh, yes. this and it says what does y equal y equals two no I want this this equation solve for what no I think we do dy over y equals 4x dx, right? So ln of y equals 2x squared plus c. What is c? ln of 2. So, does ln of y equal 2x squared plus ln of 2? How do we know it's ln of 2 should be placed? What? E to the 2x squared plus 2. So, y equals e to the 2x squared plus ln of 2, doesn't it? Yeah, it says e to ln of 2 turns into 2. How do we know c is ln of 2? Harrison, I solved this equation right here. Yes. Because yeah. y is 2 and x is 0. Oh, I didn't say that, yeah. Griffin, yes. doesn't this become this? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just, 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 he kept telling me, no, it's plus 2, it's plus 2, it's plus 2. Remember we had that before, so we put the C in the front, does it have to be LN of C? No, we can 
how do we know when it goes to the front? Is it just a plus no matter what if it goes to the front? When it's an L in. Are you saying at the end? Yeah. Yeah, because it was an E to an L in. Which is like a. Well, on the last one, she, it was like she did one where it was a C, E, because she was in the top, there was a number. And we just moved it to the front. It was plus the number, yeah. Oh, so there's a number, then you just did it. Um, do you know the difference between an indefinite integral and a definite integral? Plus C. Definite has plus C, definite and, and definite has numbers on it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you know the difference between a general solution and a particular solution. Yeah. I don't know. General has plus C, particular you find C. Right? So <laughs> Okay, what did I say? It's a lot easier for people to concentrate when you don't just randomly say what enters your mind. Okay? So, do you know how to do this? See if you can get an answer to that. It is. Where the first three notes have to be? Um. No, the uh. The first two were the fruit fly was not. How am I supposed to do that with no calculator? Uh, what's the antiderivative of e to the x? Yes. So I have e to the x from zero. Oh, e to the x from zero to four. Yeah. Is it that e to the fourth minus one? Yes. That's the answer. E to the fourth uh, minus one. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's just f of b minus f of a, right? Yeah. I want to work a particular solution, and I will tell you this one is a little bit difficult. It is no calculator. Okay. Okay. I made this up, so it might be up. I was trying to make it look similar to what you're going to see on the test. There might be an ugly answer. The directions say, find the particular solution. Okay, when it says that, you've got to know that means I find C. Right? So, first thing I have, I have dy equals isn't this negative x to the negative 3 minus 2x to the negative 4 plus 6 dx? So I wrote it in a form that I could work with. Right? Okay. What is, this is y, what is the antiderivative of this? Don't I add 1 to the in, uh, exponent and put the new number underneath? So isn't this x to the negative 2 over 2? Uh, 
Is that right? Okay, what is this? Right. Plus C. Now I fill everything in. So two equals isn't this one half? Plus isn't this two-thirds plus six plus C. Okay. Now, no calculator as Griffin's punching his buttons. Well, I, I didn't know that it makes two. One to negative two is still one. One to any power is one. Oh, I didn't know that. Now, you well, do. I knew, I knew that, but <laughs> I, I thought it was different. No. So, does 2 equal 7 and 1 sixth plus C? And I know there's no calculator, but this is 3 sixths and this is 4 sixths. So that's not a horrible thing to add there. Okay. Negative. 5 and 1 sixth equals C. Is that right? Yeah. No? Yeah. I thought it would be. No, uh, 5 sixths. 12 sixths minus. That's 2. 43 sixths. I got it from negative 3 4 sixths. Is it? I don't know. I feel like it's going to be four and five sixths. Four and five sixths. That's five and one sixth. And it's not that hard on the test. I told you I made this one up, so I made it harder. Sorry. So what is Y equal? One over two x squared plus two over three x cubed plus six x minus thirty one sixth. Is that right? Okay. I promise the what the ones on the test are not that hard. The ones without a calculator, but, you know. Now, do you know the derivative of sine? What's the antiderivative of sine? Oh, no. It's negative cosine. Yeah. Right. Anti-negative. Okay. What's the derivative of tangent? Derivative of tangent is... Secant squared. Secant squared. You're doing it. Or He's doing anti-derivatives. No. So what would this be? Just out of curiosity. By the way, do you know the tangent of pi over four? Yeah. No. The sine of pi over 4 and cosine of pi over 4 is rather good on 2. The edge of pi over 4 is 1. Right? What? What's the ju is it clean? Yes. Yes, I said. I said curiosity. It's like a cat. 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 It's like a their cat in the washer. <laughs> I did not put my own cat in the washer. I did not know how the story got that. Wait, that's happened to you too. 
Tough spot. We can assume that one of them is going to be the one on the antiderivative. Pro the figure out if they are. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that true? Sure. Yeah. I did not it's, it's been so long I've done this. I'm so long to get antiderivative. What's a derivative of tangent? Secant Secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative, negative cosecant squared. So, do I actually have u du out here? I wasn't finished. <laughs> then, what is the cotangent of zero? One. One. I don't know. I haven't done that. I think it's undefined. Yeah. So we're going to have to go back to cosine. Because I made this up and I did a bad job, but you get the idea of how you'd use the UDU on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cotangent is. I would plug them into cotangent and the new ones would be right here. We did the end of the So it's not If I switch to you, I should have put new numbers here and here. Griffin. What? Yes. What? I didn't. I said I'm going to put new numbers in these two spots. Do you know it's not zero zero? Do you know Newton's law of cooling? Yes. You better know Newton's law of cooling. What is it? It's on the video. T minus TS equals the. What is the S medium? So T minus. Yes. Negative. Is that it? Negative thing, right? Well, because it's going down, yeah. Right? The only thing different in this one and this one. It is I subtracted a T S from both of them. What is T S? T S is the surrounding temperature. Okay, that's on a calculator allowed page. And word problems like you've been doing on worksheets. Uh, are all on calculate. So, what do we need to look at again? What we just did? I don't know. I'm asking you. Let's do uh, another one of those UDQs where we change the... Uh, yeah, can we do a different one? That, that works?
Would that work? Yeah, that'll work, won't it? That work? What would you be? What is du? Oh, I need an x out here. That's what I need. What is du? Two x dx. Right? So do I have one half the integral of? Is that right? Oh, sorry. Right? Now, what is this new number right here? I put this for x, don't I? What do I get? What's my new number here? So I have 1 over, what's the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine of u from 0 to pi squared. Pi squared, right? So I have 1 half negative cosine of pi squared minus negative cosine of zero. Is that right? What is cosine of zero? I honestly don't know how we do one. It, is, it is one. It is one. So minus plus one, so what's the pi squared? So if I couldn't use a calculator, my answer would be negative cosine pi squared plus 1. If I could not use a calculator. Does that make sense? If I could, I would type this in. If you cannot use a calculator, they expect you to leave x squared or whatever, e squared or whatever. They don't expect you to do that in your head. Oh, I know what we haven't done. Slope field. Oh, those are not bad. We did, yes. It has a slope field on Okay. I'd pick a point. Let's start with zero, zero. Zero, zero. What is my? Zero. Slope is zero. So the bottom line, I'm basically going to look for a zero, aren't I? What about one, one? Two, two, and three, three. Wait a minute. What is negative one, negative one? So I'm going to have a diagonal all the way across. 
right? Now, because this does not have a denominator, I am not going to have any undefined lines, am I? No. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So at the point one zero, what is my slope? One, this is going to be two, and this is going to be three. Well, I don't think it is, is it? This is negative one, zero. Isn't that one? Yeah. It's absolute value. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about zero, one? One, two, and three. Yeah. What about negative one? one two, and three. You all remember this? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not hard. It's not hard. Yeah. All we do is select like the point. Are we going to have to do the whole slope or the? We'll see. Like this point is negative one, negative one. Right? Uh -huh. So I put it in here. Negative one. I'm sorry, this point is one, negative one, isn't it? That point right there? Yeah. So I put it in. Doesn't that give me two? Yeah. My slope is two. So I just draw a little bitty line that's close to where a slope of up 2 over 1 would be, because 2 is 2 over 1. Does that make sense? So that's why all of these, the slope was 0. So basically, I am just drawing a little bit of a slope at every point. I will tell you, Griffin, Sorry. on the test, it is a picture that you match with an equation. But you don't have to draw. Oh, nice. Does that make sense? Okay, so on the test, tomorrow we're going to start with the no calculator. There's a slope field. There's a differential equation. There is an indefinite and a definite. And what are the problems? There's a general solution, a particular solution, two indefinite integrals, a definite integral. There are nine no calculator. Oh. Endlessly no calculator. Huh? Mostly no calculator. Well, then we pick up the calculator. And I honestly don't know if we can get to this tomorrow.